Trigger warning. This is a deep, introspective interview featuring an individual we will refer to as Naughty. She may or may not be addicted, she is homeless, and she is currently a resident of the streets. In this video, we seek to understand, we seek to educate, and we seek to better society as a whole. Thank you very much. Right. How are you doing today, Naughty? Good. <laughs> um, that's good. And a, a bit about yourself. How long have you been in Hartford? About 20 years now. Um, on the street, I've been, been by myself for about 15 years. For about 15 years? Yes. I left home when I was young. About 17 years old, had my first child. Um, uh, sorry. <laughs> uh, nothing to be sorry for, honey. We're, we're just here to, to understand and to to help each other. So, um, what is what is life like uh, out out here? Is it? Uh, do you ever see anything rough? Uh, oh, absolutely. What is life like out here? It's imagine having to wake up every day and not knowing if the day you were gonna die. Wow, waking yeah. up and not knowing if you if you're gonna live or die that day. Yeah, or you know, uh, how about every time you decide that you wanted to go and get away, as we call it, getting out and get away from the world. Obviously, a lot of us get high out here and. It's just how we handle our problems. But what if one day that high you never came back from? Hmm. And you leave a lot of people behind. It's crazy. I've lost a lot of friends. A lot. Um, a lot of friends, a lot of family in the process. I'm, I'm sorry to hear that, 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 uh, that you're going through that. But uh, that's what we're here to fight, and that's what we're here to eliminate from Hartford. So, I give you so much credit for being here right now, to be part of the effort. Now, do you think, do you think the drugs today are, are worse than they've been before? Personally? <laughs> for myself, yes, because nowadays it's not what it was before. Before, everybody knew exactly what they were putting into their body when it was heroin and stuff like that. But now there's people putting all types of stuff in the drugs. There's, people are dying left and right. And people fucking take a shot. I mean, take a hit of fucking crack and they're overdosing on fentanyl. How does that happen? You know? Mm. There's drug dealers out here don't give a fuck about us. They don't care about us. They just want no, they don't. the money. You know? And as long as we're bringing them the money, they're going to provide us with whatever we need. But they're also going to stretch their dollar. There's people that put meat center out here in these drugs. There's people losing limbs. People losing chunks of their skin out here. I'm pretty sure you've seen faces and I wasn't like that before you know wow. I'm pretty you know I'm pretty lucky I'm one of the lucky ones that I still look you know, somewhat presentable you know I can put yeah. myself together but a lot of them don't you know there's a lot of my girls a lot of the guys I know out here I've been to a few years they look like old people you know completely different person like, what the hell is that? You know? It's crazy. And they're worse and worse every day. Wow. So, do you, do you think the drug dealers, they don't care if people live or die? No, absolutely not. Like I said, we have, we have, um, I've lost a lot of friends. And every time we lose somebody new, it's like, Oh, did you hear so and so die? They're like, oh, she did. Are you serious? 
and that's it. They, they, they don't care to ask, oh, when's the funeral or what happened or no. They're, oh, okay, well, because for everyone that dies, there's ten more that comes. Hmm. There's ten more people that come people. to buy the drugs. Ten more addicts. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Every day. Wow. What's the youngest, like, person you've seen out here, like, age range? Fourteen. Fourteen? Man and woman? A female. A female. Fourteen-year-old female? Yep. Selling her body, prostituting, getting high, shooting up. Shooting up at fourteen. Fourteen years old. There's some of these people have been doing it since they were ten, eleven. Some of these people have started getting high with their parents. Oh my god. There's girls out here that are still running around with their mom. With their mother? With their mother. So, prostituting with their mother? Yeah. Getting high from their mothers. It's crazy. It's, it's a lot of stuff I never would imagine you run into. It's just see shit that you never thought you'd see. You hear shit. I mean, I've been in the same area for almost 15 years and. I've heard shit, I know shit, I you know shit that can possibly more than likely get me killed if I was ever to say anything. Wow. You know, and that's what I mean by it's not just a constant fear of waking up and you overdose and you're dying. No, it's the fear that you have to have with these people. You don't know who they are at the end of the day. They sure as hell don't care about you. No. Yes, of course, if, if they're selling someone something that can kill them, <laughs> of course exactly. it. Exactly. My wow. daughter's father died and I did not see the man that we got the dress for him for almost five years. I almost just five ran years. In, I just ran into him and I told him, I said, the last time I saw you was when I grabbed those bags that killed my daughter's father. And he had, I believe the time, he was in jail. So I believe the time he spent in jail, he, you know, he, he was remorseful, you know, he, he was in shock, he, you know, he, he apologized. And as of right now, so far, he's got himself out of that situation, out of that, that life, but it can, as easy to come back, it's just like that. Yes, just as the, the drugs is an addiction for us, it's also an addiction for the dealers, is the money, you know? It's the, fact the, money. the money, right then and there, you know, the convenience of it. Yes, I say but money. What is the convenience of it if you're going to lose everything? <laughs> One day, none of that convenience is going to matter. You're not going to leave anything behind, but the headache and the stress that you left on your family, you know? You're right. You're right, and I I give you so much credit for being open and and sincere, because that's such a beautiful way to put it. It's the stress that they put on their family. Mm -hmm. That's what it comes down to. And after they go, we hurt our family. You know, while we're out here running around doing these drugs and we think we're having, oh, I had a good day today. Well, no, because my mother's still going to sleep on the where I am. So how fucked up is that? How selfish is it for me to think that? You know, and I've tried to get out of that. I pulled myself out of that situation. But it's so easy to just go back because like I said, it's the best life and it's the convenience of it. You know what I'm saying? If I don't want to feel anything at home when I'm home and sober, I have to go through the motions. You know, I have to talk to people, I have to do this. And I don't want to feel anything out here and I come out here, I don't have to feel. I can be a completely different person. And that's a problem a lot of us have. You know? So you're saying you don't, it's like when you're out here, you don't have to feel. Also, there's a lot to do with it because a lot of us don't really like who we are. People say that we're good people, and I mean, me personally, I know that I have a good heart. I know I'm a good mother, and I know that.
that when I'm sober, I'm the type of person, you know, like I get what I want. I, I will, I'm very motivated. I'm very, like, my family means the world to me when I'm sober. Yes, I care about them and I love them right now, but they're not at the top of my list because I am dependent on drugs. So every day I get up and I move, not for my children, not for myself, but for that drug. For the drug. You know, you know, it's, I don't know, half the time, we don't know whose car we're jumping into at night, you know, and there's been plenty of girls who's been murdered and, you know, just kicked off the side of the road, girls that I've known, you know, and that shit happens. Do you have any protection on you? Case, Absolutely. Yeah. Always. Always, always, always. Good. All right. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's. I've, I've heard, that, you know, there's so many stories. Like, like you say, you, you know, you have close friends that have gone through that, so you know that that happens. And mm-hmm. now, what are your plans for getting out of this situation and, and moving up in life? As of right now, I can't really say I have any plans.